Welcome to Blended Philosophy. The topic of this episode is currency. The primary question is what's the best form of currency? The secondary question is should currency be uniform? Unfortunately, no, I couldn't, couldn't make it tonight, so I'm just, just, just going to revert back to our contingency plan here. And maybe actually you're going to tell me what, what you think, and I'm going to do my best to defend. Should currency be uniform? Mm -hmm. As in something you wear? As in like all the same. So just a hypothetical here. If I have dollars in my pocket, you would have dollars in your pocket. That's uniform. Whereas if I had lira in my pocket, and you had pounds in your pocket, that's, di that's different. How are we even going to, what even is the point of the currency? What about if you have US dollars and I have Australian dollars? <sighs> that's a good question for a different show. This is the absolute truth. So that, that, would, that would, you know, objectively, if you're living in Australia, it works. Objectively, if you're living in America, it works. But, absolutely, it's not good enough. What about a $5 Australian banknote? Mm. And... Give me a second. No, uh, keep talking two, if you want. Two, two, do two $2 Australian coins and a $1 Australian coin. That would be uniform. See, the currency is uniform even though the cash is different. How is that uniform? They both equal... Five AUD. How much is an Australian dollar? That much. How much is that? Well, you can see for yourself. You pick it up, inspect it. These are two fifty cent coins. They are, yes. Is this one Australian dollar? Yes. And then go on the day and you lose the car. Mm. That you told her you drive her home. I told her in advance. Yes, yeah, that I drive her home. home yeah. Well, the, then, okay, but well, in that case, uh, yeah. it's basically you're saying should there be one currency? Yes. I think no. Actually, they, they should be. Why? Well, why, why shouldn't there be? What if that currency is bad? Make a good one. How can you just make a good one? Everyone would then. Lose. Do we have a good one at the minute? No. USD? That gets compared to everything. That's better than 80, but not good. What are the, the faults of the USD? It's an inflationary currency. The issue... It, it's, yes, it's worth, okay, it, yeah, it, it, the, yeah. The, it, it has no inherent value. Origami? <laughs> it can cut things? You can write on it? Okay, okay. Inherent value right there. I just want to... Cash, it's hard to send to someone, like over a distance. It's, you need Give me person. an example. Um, say you wanted to... Um, someone lived over east and you owed them some money. Uh-huh. Right? And you're going to pay them using this currency but it's, it's only physical. Right. You don't need to get an envelope, put it in the envelope, post it, pay postage, hope that it gets to Ah, uh, see, then now it's complicated because you're paying for the money to move. Yes. Or you can have a digital currency. Right. And transfer it electronically. That's much more convenient. Okay. But then to transfer electronically, you need you know, banks and infrastructure and internet connectivity, all of that. You need internet connectivity, I'll give you that. If you somehow had something that was physical, mm. but at the same time digital, and it all was right. all the, it, like it could be perfect in everything, which I don't think is actually even possible. You do, because all digital stuff is physical. But then it wouldn't be easily divisible. What do you mean? Like, so with notes or coins, right? You can have a stack of coin, then go half the pile. 
You can okay, hunt. yes. Yeah. If you have a computer board mm -hmm. and it's containing the configuration of the electrons in some sort of solid memory, right, that a non volatile memory, and then you're going to like hand that over to someone to then plug into their computer to send. Yeah. You can't snap the computer in two. If you send something on the internet, you can send the package in little parts. So you could just uh, cut it halfway through sending it and only send half of the package. Yes, but that requires internet connectivity. I'm talking about offline. Yep. So okay. rather than sending it with a computer, you rip a bit of your computer out, snap it in half, right. and you're just trying to give them half the money. I can see how that's definitely less divisible than cash. I cannot conceive of something that is perfect in all regards, right? So right. you can use it physically, but also digitally perfectly, as, right. as efficient. So that, in that way, I think that you're better off having at least digital and physical. And then you get different types of physical, banknote versus coin. Because coins are, you know, longer lasting, but it's more of a pain to keep with, with you. Um, maybe it's easier for machines to process in the past or whatever, you know, or automate payments. But you go to like a machine because it can just weigh the coins. What's wrong with balloons? They're easy to re to produce. Go on then, produce a balloon. I'll start up a balloon factory and just print balloons. I don't think you can. You can, you can start you can start up a factory. What what do you like I don't want to give you all the answers. Where are you getting your resources from? <laughs> from plastic code. Doesn't sound so easy. So what I do is I go to YouTube and I type, how's, how's it made? Balloons. And I'd watch that video. They were made of dried animal bladders. A better but unpleasant concept. In the 19th century, someone invented. Okay. How are you gonna get a dry animal bladder? Go out and find a kangaroo dead on the side of the road. You got me there. There's, there's a lot of them. Should currency be uniform? According to Pizza Stream, currency shouldn't be uniform. All right. Let's... Next episode on Blade of Philosophy. Should currency be portable? Be what? Portable. Portable. Should currency.